Hello, Nancy, the older woman greeted warmly. Hello, Mrs. Arrington, Nancy nodded in reply. It's so hot today. Do you always sell here? I think it would be better in the shade. Well, this spot is good. It's near the bus stop, so more people come by. Nancy responded with a smile. Well, give me a litre jar, then. The young woman adjusted her white headscarf, which concealed her long curly hair, and stooped behind the makeshift counter where she was selling homemade milk. Nancy had the look of a true villager, strong, sturdy, with a robust posture. Her slightly rough skin was tanned, but it didn't detract from her appearance. On the opposite, it added a simple charm. "'You're as busy as a bee!' Mrs. Harrington exclaimed. "'I have to be. My mother is ill and I'm raising my son alone. We all need money these days. No one will feed us for free.' "'Yes, we all miss your Tom. He was a good man. It's a shame he died so young and left you alone,' the elderly woman said sympathetically. Nancy gazed downward, her lower lip caught between her teeth in sadness. The sharp sting of loss had faded over the years, but the memories of her husband, a casualty at his workplace, still haunted her. He was such a great forest man. He knew every twig in the forest, and never let the poachers off the hook. He was constantly chasing them. That's why they killed him, Nancy whispered. How cruel they were! A gunshot to his back? How could anyone murder over some worthless fur? It's all because of this hunting business. The worst part is that they never caught his murderer. The case was either silenced or there was no evidence. It's all bribes from those villains. Mrs. Arrington dismissed her with a wave of her hand. Anne, you gamekeeper, curse him. He is much more compliant than Tom. He avoids disputes with poachers. And look at him now, living a good life. Where does he get his money? He must be making a fortune. Yes. It's impossible to earn that much by honest labour in our neck of the woods, Nancy replied with a sad grin. Our district isn't that wealthy. I work on a farm, and even then it's not enough. I had to get my own cow and sell milk on the highway during weekends. That's how we make ends meet. You poor thing. Why did such a good person end up with such a difficult life? Mrs. Arrington shook her head sympathetically. Well, I must get going. I have things to do at home, and I should put the milk in the fridge before it sours in the heat. Goodbye, Nancy waved. She waited until Mrs. Arrington was out of sight, before sinking heavily into her chair. The only customer in an hour was an acquaintance. Business was slow today, and the intense heat wasn't helping. Phew, it's so hot. I can hardly breathe. Nancy said, touching her kerchief. And there's nobody around. If something were to happen, there would be no one to help. Suddenly, her vision blurred. Nancy tried to stand, but her legs gave way, and she collapsed by the roadside, unconscious. Should we call an ambulance? A male voice called out from somewhere. Nancy tried carefully to open her eyes, wondering how much time had passed since she fell. She was roused by someone gently slapping her cheeks and sprinkling cool water on her face from a bottle. Just wasting time, a female voice suddenly remarked. Nancy realised she was lying on the ground. The unexpected rescuer was not in sight, but a luxurious car parked directly in front of her drew her attention. A fancy car like that couldn't belong to someone poor. How can you say that? What if she needs medical assistance? What if she doesn't regain consciousness? A man retorted in indignation. As if I care. Look, she's already opened her eyes. A woman retorted irritably. A worried stranger's face soon came into Nancy's view. He was well-groomed with dark hair and a neat beard. Nancy's gaze shifted slightly and landed on a tidy name tag, reading, Harris, First Class Driver. Are you okay? The man asked sympathetically. I think so. Yes, I'm sorry, Nancy whispered. Let me help you up. The driver extended his hand, allowing Nancy to lean on him as he gently helped her to her feet. Now, Nancy could freely look around and noticed a young woman in the back seat of the car. She also could assess the stature and strength of her unexpected saviour. He was a striking man, 
with vibrant green eyes, gleaming with unquenchable optimism. However, now his face was filled with worry. Are you sure you're okay? Should we call for help? The driver asked. Are we leaving today or not? The woman in the car immediately interrupted him. Becky, why are you so rude? The man said to her, and the woman snorted, crossing her arms over her chest. She was looking indifferently at Nancy, conveying her lack of interest in the plight of a mere peddler. Becky was a rich young woman, known for her impeccable looks and fashion sense. Unlike Nancy, she was admired for her graceful figure and perfect proportions. Her skin was flawless and firm, without any extra muscle or tan line. It was clear that Becky invested a lot of time and used high-end cosmetics to maintain her appearance. Don't be embarrassed. I'm from the provinces myself. Therefore, I am always ready to help rural people. The driver smiled, taking Nancy's hiccup on his own account. Thank you. I apologize for your delay. Nancy couldn't help but smile back. I think you should end your work for today. I would walk you home, but I need to drive my passenger. He motioned towards Becky. You must have broken some kind of rules to help me, huh? Will you be all right? Yes, he will. Becky hissed vindictively. I'll make sure to tell my father that we're late because he decided to flirt with the milkmaids. Nancy looked at Becky in surprise. As a simple villager, she was not used to such open hostility, especially from a stranger who she had never wronged. Report to whomever you wish. I couldn't leave a woman in trouble. Harris waved off dismissively. Becky's threats didn't seem to have made an impression on him, but Nancy felt awkward. Excuse me, and thank you for your help, she frowned. Now go, just go. I'll get home on my own. Dad, can you believe it? Becky shrieked from the threshold as soon as she and Harris arrived at the house. What happened? Mr. Mayor asked, raising an eyebrow in surprise. This elegant gentleman epitomized the image of dignity and trustworthiness. Despite his age, he maintained a proud posture and an aura of confidence. The slight wrinkles on his face enhanced his dignified image, reflecting a wealth of life experience. Instead of taking me home, your driver was flirting with some kind of milkmaids, Becky accused, glaring at her father. Really? Mr. Mayer looked even more surprised. Harris, what happened? The driver had just entered the house, carrying Becky's bags. You see, we were driving along the highway, and there was a woman selling milk near a stop. She fainted from the heat. I saw it and I stopped to help her. You know, bring her to her senses. And is that all? grinned Becky's father. Daughter, you need to be considerate. You're surrounded by real people, not robots. Do we owe her anything? We can't save everyone, the girl hissed in anger. What's wrong with stopping to help? Human life is no joke. If someone falls ill in front of you, the normal reaction is to offer help. Why are you talking to me like a child? I'm actually twenty-five years old, if you haven't noticed, Becky exclaimed angrily. Well, if you're an adult, then stop acting like a child and behave yourself, Mr. Mayer immediately retorted. He deeply loved his only daughter, who was a living reminder of his wife, who had tragically died from an illness. But at times, Becky was unbearable, throwing tantrums without reason. Whether this was a result of her upbringing, or resolved teenage rebellion, Mr. Meyer was uncertain. He didn't know how to rectify this behaviour, but he held on to the hope that with time, his daughter would mature and become more reasonable. As you say, the girl snorted, and then left the room, slamming the door defiantly. Harris, do you think that that woman is decent? asked the man unexpectedly. I don't know, we didn't have much time to socialise, shrugged the driver, but she was very embarrassed about delaying us, and seemed more concerned about me getting in trouble for violating regulations than her health. Can you find her? Ask her if she would like to work for me as a maid. Well, I don't think finding her will be a problem. I remember the place where she has been selling her products, but why her? You see, a maid works right in the house. She will be in constant contact with us and know pretty much everything that's going on. That's why 
I don't want to hire anyone from a professional agency. Lately, rumors have started circulating that employees of such offices like to leak information to their employers. Are you afraid of business rivals? Harris nodded understandingly. Yes, because I've run into them many times. I found bugs after electricians and cameras. I have too big business and too much money in production. And you think a girl from the countryside wouldn't consider engaging in espionage out of the goodness of her heart? Harris frowned. The suggestion seemed to upset Harris. The driver, a simple man from the suburbs, had started working for Mr. Mayer purely by chance. He enjoyed working for the businessman, who was known for his fairness and good treatment of his employees. Yet, amidst such luxury, Harris still felt improper. Just hope that a man from the province will be nobler, above these underhanded intrigues, Mr. Mayer. Harris's thoughts didn't escape his watchful eye, therefore he added, especially since I have one good example of such a man. The man winked at Harris, who, realizing the reference was to him, became slightly embarrassed. His relationship with Mr. Mayer felt more fatherly than that of a subordinate to a superior. Over the years, Harris had developed sincere respect for the businessman, who had seen life and always listened to his opinion, even if they sometimes disagreed. And furthermore, Mr. Mayer continued, I need a quick, unpretentious, hard-working woman who doesn't command an excessively high salary. So you want to save money? Harris muttered. I just don't want to overpay for an agency brand name. Don't worry, I won't cut into her salary. She'll certainly earn more than from selling milk at the bus stop. Almost immediately after their conversation, Harris went to search for a future maid. However, she was nowhere to be found. There were no passers-by who knew the saleswoman as well. I should have escorted her home, then I would have gotten her address, the driver said to himself as he examined the empty bus stop. What upset him most was that he was the one who advised her to go home to avoid another fainting spell. Should I leave a note? Harris lingered, scanning his surroundings. But without any clues to her address, he decided to return the following day. A note with his address or personal number could easily fall into the wrong hands, and considering Mr. Mayer's excessive suspiciousness, it was best not to disturb him. Moreover, he had been complaining about his troubled heart lately, so there was no need for additional stress. Oh, come on, Harris grumbled, finding the bus stop empty again. This was the second time out of luck. He didn't even know the saleswoman's schedule. Would she return? Harris was determined to keep his word to Mr. Mayer, so he resolved to continue his attempts. Hello, I finally found you here, Harris exclaimed on the third day. Luck was finally on his side, and he jumped joyfully out of the car upon spotting the woman in a white headscarf. Good afternoon, she responded, smiling shyly. His unexpected appearance made her cautious. However, the handsome driver didn't seem threatening, and the fact that he had visited for days just to see her warmed the lonely woman's heart. I completely forgot to introduce myself last time. I'm Harris. It's a pleasure to meet you here, in consciousness. Nancy. Beautiful name. Harris smiled. Nancy, would you be interested in a job change? My boss is offering a position as a maid at his country estate. It's nearby, and the work is pleasant. What kind of maid am I? Nancy responded gesturing dismissively. It's nothing difficult. Your main duties would be maintaining cleanliness and order in the house. Occasionally you might need to run errands for Mr. Mayer, my boss. I'm not sure. Give it some thought. What's there to lose? It's a job in a big, beautiful house, and certainly beats standing on the curb selling milk. The offer was tempting from the start, but Nancy knew it just wasn't possible. As she understood it, a maid's job required her to be constantly at her employer's home. I simply can't stay away from my home for a long time, Nancy replied, her gaze faltering. I need to take care of my mother, and I have a son as well. Don't even worry about it. Mr. Mayer assumed you wouldn't want to leave your household, so there will be no need for you to live in his house. I will bring you 
and take you back every day. No transportation problems and all at the employer's expense. Give it some thought. It's a great job opportunity. Well, there is some truth in what you say, Nancy muttered. Why not give it a try? Great. Shall we go to the interview? I'll just let Mr. Mayer know. Harris, I'm sorry, but first, I have to take the rest of the milk home. Nancy interrupted the driver. Wait for me here. I'll be right back. Oh, don't even worry. I have a car. I'll take you. This time, Harris decided not to miss the opportunity to find out Nancy's address, so as not to lose contact. Well, I see you're a decent woman, hard-working, dexterous. Quite a match for me, Mr. Mayer said. Thank you. I tried. Nancy smiled. The interview was a bit strange. The businessman didn't want to waste time on long conversations, so he immediately asked the potential employee to clean one of the rooms. Well, if it goes on like this, we're in for a very profitable cooperation. You can start your duties tomorrow, and here is a salary, payable at the beginning and middle of the month. Nancy modestly accepted the envelope. Even at first glance, there was ten times more money than she was paid on the farm, not to mention the milk trade, and another paycheck was expected in just two weeks. There's too much here. I'm afraid you're overestimating me," Nancy muttered, offering the envelope back. "Nancy, I'm a business person. Profitable investments are my job. Trust me, my company never wastes money." Nancy had already been a maid for several weeks. She was diligent in her duties, and after receiving the rest of her salary, she became even more committed. "Get out of my way!" Becky's displeased voice rang out suddenly. What? Nancy, busy dusting the cupboards, did not immediately respond to Mr. Mayer's daughter's command, resulting in a sharp nudge to her side. Are you deaf? Becky snapped. I'm sorry. The woman quickly moved to the opposite end of the room, trying to stay out of sight of the volatile young woman. Becky had disliked the new maid from the first day, constantly attempting to humiliate or tease her. By the way. Make sure you change the linens by tomorrow. If I have to sleep on dirty sheets one more time because of you, they're fresh," Nancy said quietly. "Are you still arguing?" Becky advanced menacingly towards the maid, even swinging her hand. "Becky, your father is calling for you," said Harris, entering the room. "What are you doing here?" "None of your business," Becky shouted. "Okay, but your father is still waiting for you." Becky turned abruptly and quickly left the room, causing the door jams to rattle with another slam. Hysterical girl, Harris said at her back and turned to Nancy. "What's your problem?" "Nothing," Nancy replied, barely audible. Harris squinted at the maid shrinking in the corner. It was apparent that Mr. Mayer's daughter was intentionally attacking the new employee, harboring hatred at some subconscious level. Do you want me to tell Mr. Mayer anything? Harris suggested, referring to Becky's antics. Don't. He'll be upset. I don't want to cause trouble in the family. The woman shook her head. But this can't continue. It's okay. You're too kind. Harris sighed. I wish I could scold her, even though she's already a grown woman. But who's going to let me? I'm also a subordinated person. Nancy smiled at his support, and Harris. For the umpteenth time, noted her natural beauty, which was increasingly captivating him. And what time will you be home today? He asked. I'll be a bit late. You heard it yourself. Becky wants new bedding. Why don't you let me help you then? Oh, then that fool will claim that you've spilled oil all over her car. Nancy smiled. Considering that I've never opened the hood myself, and all the work is done by the mechanics at the service. Harris chuckled. At this moment, unable to pull himself together, Harris moved closer to the maid and suddenly kissed her on the lips. She blushed, feeling like a schoolgirl sneaking a kiss with her lover under the stairs. Nancy stood on her toes and reciprocated the kiss. She felt as comfortable and at ease with Harris as never before. Who would have thought that I'd have to thank my work? For a relationship with such a beautiful woman, 
The man smiled gently. It happened because you're a bad driver, sighed Nancy languidly. Why is that? Because you were looking at me more than at the road. I just felt a mutual interest and decided not to miss the opportunity, Harris winked. Sometimes I think I shouldn't agree to a date so quickly, Nancy smiled. We missed the stage where the gallant knight wins the lady's heart. But we can get to the most interesting part, the driver whispered conspiratorially before kissing her again. I think that's what's bothering Becky most of all. What's the big deal? Do you think she's interested in me? Of course. How could anyone overlook a handsome man with such a huge ego? Nancy giggled, poking Harris in the chest with her fist. Seriously speaking, she's just used to considering everyone around her as her property. And now, it turns out, I've taken her toy. Maybe. The man shook his head. Oh, I completely forgot. I need to get more gas before we hit the road. I'm sorry, I won't be able to help you with making the bed, or I won't have a vehicle to drive you home. Go then, Nancy smiled, and returned to her duties. Nancy, come here, please. Mr. Mayer's voice came from the kitchen. Yeah? What's happened? she asked, opening the door. Well, it's me who wanted to ask you what happened here. The landlord pointed melancholically to an overturned flower pot, its soil scattered all over the floor. I'm sorry, I'll clean it up right away, the maid exclaimed. Yes, please do, before the soil scatters all over the house, Mr. Mayer nodded. And the guest room is a mess too. I've been finding too much clutter lately. Please pay closer attention to the house, and more frequently. I'm sorry, it won't happen again, Nancy muttered, blushing. She felt embarrassed to be reprimanded. Mr. Mayer was a very patient man, and he rarely scolded her, understanding that it was challenging to constantly monitor such a large house. He simply pointed out the mistakes, so they wouldn't go unnoticed. But the most frustrating part was that the increasing disturbances in different parts of the house were not accidental. By the way, Becky asked again for you to be fired. Why don't you get along with her? As if by accident, the businessman asked. I don't know. Apparently she thinks I'm not professional enough, the woman answered modestly. Well, Nancy, try to make peace with her. Harmony at home is a crucial element of life. I will she responded. However, it didn't depend on Nancy. In fact, Becky constantly created a mess on purpose and then swiftly ran to her father to highlight Nancy's negligence. Naturally, Nancy couldn't clean everything in time, which left Mr. Mayer thinking she was lazy and not very diligent. However, the businessman was not quick to dismiss the new employee because of her diligent ethic in the first weeks of work. Yes, it's a large house. It's unfortunate that Tammy, Becky's mother, left so early. She had everything under control. Now it's just a semblance of a family home, Mr. Mayer said, a note of sadness in his voice. I sympathize with you. My husband also passed away early, and it's challenging to fill that void. But it's never too late to let another person into your heart. Nancy cautiously consoled her host. I suppose it's a bit late for me, replied Mr. Mayer, rubbing his chest. I used to think the same, but you know, the main thing is to meet the right person. The man shuddered. Memories of Tammy caused a painful sting in his heart, leading to another round of unpleasant spasms. Would you like some water? suggested Nancy, full of anxiety. No. Oh! Mr. Mayer staggered, then lost consciousness. Did you two lovebirds knock Daddy out? Becky hissed, her anger directed at the driver and the maid. What does this have to do with us? Harris retorted. Everything. Your negligence stressed him out, leading him to the hospital. He suffered a heart attack. We don't know when he'll be back. Nancy sobbed. The unfortunate attack had happened before her eyes, and she was still worried. Actually, considering herself guilty... When she saw him on the floor, she was confused, thought too long, and called an ambulance only five minutes later. 
At first, she went looking for Harris, then Becky. Only then did she realize she was alone and began dialing the ambulance, her fingers trembling over the keys. I've had enough of you two. While my father is receiving treatment, I'm in charge. As the mistress of this house, my first action is to fire both of you. Pack your things and leave. After reprimanding her former subordinates, Becky stormed out of the room, slamming the door behind her. Go to the hell. Harris, don't. Nancy urged Harris. Let's go. Nothing can be fixed now. It's better for us to leave peacefully. You're right. Let's visit Mr. Mayer. He's been in the hospital for days, and she hasn't visited him once. She doesn't care about how her not-young father feels, as long as she gets her hands on the family's money. But we're there almost every day. He might be sick of us. No. The doctors say social interaction and positive emotions are the best medicine. Let's go. Don't tell him she fired us. We shouldn't give any extra stress. Let him get better without such news. Of course, Harris agreed. He left the official car keys and documents, took Nancy's hand, and led her to his old car. It wasn't as flashy as the owner's, but it was well kept and functional. The drive to the hospital took about half an hour. How are you doing, Chief? Harris cheerfully asked as they were led to Mr. Mayer's room. I'm hanging in there. The businessman attempted a smile. Hello, Nancy greeted him with a sad smile. Mr. Mayer tried to brace himself and even attempted to get up, but it was clear to see he was not feeling well. Is Becky not with you? Mr. Mayer asked hopefully. Sorry, no, Nancy replied, shaking her head. She's busy, planning to inherit and lead your empire. Harris couldn't help himself and replied. She's never had any family feelings, Mr. Mayer sighed and she has always been a real headache. I suppose I failed in raising her. It's understandable. She grew up without a mother. It might have affected her, Nancy proposed, shrugging her shoulders. I tried my best to fill in for Tammy, but... whispered the sick man with difficulty. Enough of this. Let's cheer up, Harris interjected, clapping his hands together. By the way, is everything okay with you two? Becky isn't causing any trouble, is she? Mr. Mayer asked. Harris and Nancy glanced at each other and then shook their heads almost in unison. No, not at all. Everything's fine. The woman replied quickly. Well, at least that's good news, the businessman said, smiling with relief. What are the doctors saying? Harris quickly shifted the conversation in a different direction. Oh, nothing good. I've been lying here for days with no relief, Mr. Mayer grumbled. They say I need surgery, but honestly, I'm scared. Why? The driver raised an eyebrow. You've never been afraid, have you? Well, Becky consulted some specialists and then called me. She said I might not need this procedure because of my age and weakened body. She's convinced me to look for alternative treatments. I did some research as well, or rather, I read on the internet, Nancy interrupted. For your illness, there are no alternative treatments, just surgery. But why did Becky suggest waiting? The businessman frowned. I'm not sure, but I also haven't heard about a high mortality rate. In fact, they say it's a relatively simple operation. It's often performed successfully, with only a small percentage of lethal outcomes, even for patients your age. I think you should follow the doctor's recommendations, Harris joined his girlfriend. They looked at each other, clearly understanding Becky's motives. It was clear she intended to claim the family fortune and was dissuading her father from effective treatment with the hope of his demise. It's still a little scary, Mr. Mayer admitted, shaking his head. I understand what you're going through. Anyone would be afraid in this situation, but you're strong. You'll get through this, Nancy encouraged him with a smile. I agree. You've always been brave. Look at the empire you've built. Confront your illness head on, or it will consume you, Harris advised. 
Perhaps you're right. Maybe it's worth a try, the businessman said weakly. Later that day, Mr. Mayer had a comprehensive discussion with the doctor, learning all the details and finally agreeing to proceed with the preparations. Do not worry. Our clinic is top-notch. We have first-class specialists and the best equipment in the country. We will ensure the highest quality care. You won't notice any difference, the doctor assured him after getting his signature on the documents. I hope so. I don't care about any money as long as the treatment helps. That's the spirit. They say you can't buy health, but you can certainly invest in it. The surgery was scheduled for the following week. Despite his attempts to stay calm, Mr. Mayer could not help but feel nervous as the date approached. However, the excitement was in vain. The surgeons did a fantastic job, successfully resolving the issue that had been limiting the businessman's heart function. Thank you, my dears, for convincing me to do it. It really worked. Mr. Mayer smiled cheerfully at Nancy and Harris. But why do you both look so grim? You see, here's the thing, Nancy began hesitantly. I'm sorry if this sounds harsh, Mr. Mayer, but your daughter has interfered in your business. She even convinced the board of directors that you were incurable. Harris didn't hold back. What? The businessman asked, taken aback. I'm sorry, but it's true, admitted the former maid. You should have seen how angry she was when she found out the operation was successful. It can't be, Mr. Mayer gasped. Sadly, it's true. We didn't want to tell you, but you were going to find out today anyway. It's better you hear it from us. Harris shook his head. She's cunning. She did everything she could to get what she wanted. She has transferred ownership of the house to herself and moved all the accounts and details. She became the sole owner of all the property. How can that be? We're family, Mr. Mayer whispered his lips barely moving. The chamber door suddenly swung open, revealing a furious Becky. Her eyes sparkled with anger and her superiority like lightning in a storm. Ah, great, everyone's here. Congratulations on the successful surgery, but it doesn't change anything. I'm the boss now, she hissed. Daughter, shut up, old man. Why couldn't you just lie there and let me live peacefully? You're always dissatisfied with me, always meddling in my business. But now you can live wherever you want because I'm the boss. Are you trying to throw me out of my own house? Mr. Mayer exclaimed. It's mine now and you can go wherever you want. With that, Becky turned on her heels and stormed out of the room. A tense silence fell over the room. No one knew how to respond to what had just happened. What am I going to do now? Mr. Mayer sighed, his voice filled with sorrow. The last money from my personal account went towards the operation. I can't even afford a hotel until I'm well enough to undo what Becky's done. No hotels, Nancy said without hesitation. Now pack up. Take what you have and let's go to my place. My house is big enough. My mother and son live with me, but they won't mind. It feels awkward. Why do you need me there? Mr. Mayer started to refuse. No objections at all. Harris will drive us. Don't even think about resisting. I'm sorry, but I'm stronger than you right now. Nancy's eyebrows knitted together menacingly. You've got a very spirited girlfriend, Mr. Mayer chuckled, looking at Harris. So... You knew we were dating, but how? The driver asked, bewildered. I was having heart problems, not eyesight problems. You two are so affectionate, always together. I knew exactly that such wonderful people had to be together. I knew it the moment I saw our lovely Nancy. That's great, she responded with a joyful smile. Packing took quite a bit of time. Mr. Mayer's belongings easily fit into a single suitcase, as he only brought necessities to the hospital. Come in. Be careful, there's a step here, Nancy cautioned, leading the former chief to the porch. My dear, I'm, I'm not made of glass, 
Don't worry, everything is fine. It's just a little bit more, and you'll put me in the wheelchair. Mr. Mayer smiled warmly. I keep thinking you're struggling after the surgery, Nancy admitted, embarrassed. He's just lost a little weight. His rehabilitation period is now over. He will get a fresh air here, and soon he'll be back in shape in no time. Ah, Mr. Mayer is not one to give up, Harris said energetically. Is your mother okay with my visit? The businessman clarified. She's delighted. It provides her some entertainment. It gets lonely when I'm at work. Plus, she will certainly enjoy the company of such a gallant and imposing man. Nancy giggled. Well, that's one way to put it, said Mr. Mayer, embarrassed. Let's go say hello, then. The young woman moved towards her mother's room and carefully opened the door. Are you awake? she asked. Of course, come in, the mother answered from behind the door. Suddenly a ringing voice made Mr. Mayer flinch. Oddly enough, the intonation seemed strikingly familiar, as if... Nancy opened the door, revealing her mother sitting in an armchair by the window. How do you do? Pardon for me sitting. It's hard for me to stand. My name is... Eleanor, the businessman interjected. He froze on the threshold, examining the familiar figure with disbelief. The woman's blonde hair, blue eyes, that hadn't dimmed with age. Nancy's mother had managed to maintain her elegance and beauty, emanating a unique aura of wisdom. Sam? the woman said in surprise. But how did you find me? You have no idea. It's a long story. The businessman exhaled, timidly stepping closer. Do you two know each other? Nancy asked, puzzled. Yes, daughter, Eleanor smiled. This is the same groom from my youth that I told you about. What's more, he is your own father. What? All present, interrogated in one voice. Wait, but how? Is it really true? Mr. Mayer muttered. He sat opposite Eleanor, gently held her fingers and kissed them. Where did you disappear to, my love? You see, everything happened too quickly back then. My father, do you remember him? He was always against our relationship. The day I finally mustered the courage to elope with you, he somehow found out. He whisked me away to another city and practically imprisoned me there. It was only later, when it was too late that I discovered I was pregnant with Nancy. My father wouldn't let me contact you then, insisting we'd raise my daughter ourselves. Then events spiralled. Pregnancy, mum's death, adult life. Everything changed so drastically, and I couldn't find you any more. My poor girl, how did you cope? Mr. Mayer sighed sorrowfully. Well, it wasn't easy. But Nancy always gave me the strength not to give up. Eleanor smiled. Everything will be fine now. We're finally together, said the man confidently. What a twist! Harris whistled. Wait, I didn't understand anything. Are you serious about Mr. Mayer being my father? Nancy asked, standing frozen, as if afraid to forget the sudden news she had heard. She didn't dare look directly at the man. She thought she knew well, yet in reality knew not at all. Yes, it's true, and the fact that you have met is a true miracle, her mother confirmed. We're all together, at last. Nancy sobbed happily, rushing to embrace her parents. A strange warmth filled Mr. Mayer's chest, bringing a sense of tranquillity. Do I have to ask you for your wedding blessing, Chief? Harris teased, lightening the mood and drawing laughter from everyone present. Several weeks passed since their reunion. The family began settling into village life, managing their own household. Nancy returned to her old job, while Harris found work as a driver on the same farm. Well, will you manage here without us? Nancy asked. What will happen to us? Mr. Mayer responded with a grin. 
Well, you're not used to it, I suppose, in the village. Not a city or a rich mansion, after all, Nancy shrugged. Not a mansion. It's even better. Here, you know, the air is different, Mr. Mayor replied, inhaling a full breath. He had fully recovered from the operation, regaining his old self, and now he didn't look like an old man at all, flaunting a trim figure and noble grey hair. This place is good for both body and soul. Nothing superfluous. Everything as it should be, Mr. Mayor said thoughtfully. You know, I don't even regret my wealth. I created my business for your mother, to find her. But I couldn't. Who knew that a mere accident would bring us together? Accidents are not accidents, dear," said Eleanor, coming up behind him. Her health too had improved lately. She was getting up more often, moving around the house more confidently. She and Mister Mayer even began to go for walks around the house, which Nancy was truly glad about. But so much labour has gone into your business," Harris shrugged. Exactly, labour. I'm so tired from living alone that now every day feels like a holiday. Yes, I don't have money, but my illness has finally receded. The woman I love is with me. My daughter married a good man. What more could you want? Maybe you're right," Harris replied with an embarrassed smile. "I wonder how Becky is doing," Nancy suddenly asked. Don't mention that name," grumbled Harris. "Didn't she cause us enough trouble? I just feel sorry for her. She did all those bad things out of loneliness and resentment against the world and herself," Nancy replied. "You're too kind," Harris shook his head. "Everyone should have a second chance," Nancy insisted. Suddenly, there was an unexpected knock at the door. The early hour didn't suggest visitors. As most of the village's population would be at work on a weekday, are you expecting someone? Nancy asked her parents. No, maybe it's the neighbors, but we agreed to meet in the evening. Everyone has their own business in the morning, Mum replied doubtfully. Nancy went to the front door and saw. Wow, what a surprise! She exclaimed. There's been a lot of coincidences lately. Don't tell me there's. But Harris didn't have time to finish. Nancy opened the door, and everyone saw Becky modestly shuffling from foot to foot. "Hello," she said quietly, too scared to look up. "Why did you come here?" asked Harris. "Well, Harris, why are you so rude?" Nancy intervened, cutting her husband off. "Maybe something's happened." "What does it matter to us?" "Please stop it," Nancy retorted. Mr. Mayer stared at the back of the room, uncertain of how to act. He had long forgiven his daughter for her past mistakes and desired to reconnect with her, but he was unsure how to tell Becky about Eleanor. He feared that his newfound relationship would be seen as a betrayal of Becky's mother's memory. However, he also didn't want to keep his first love in the secret from Becky. "What's wrong, daughter?" he finally asked, daring to step out of the shadows. Dad, I'm such a fool," Becky suddenly sobbed. "Forgive me." Unable to bear the stances directed at her, the young woman broke down in tears. Large tears rolled down her cheeks, smearing her expensive mascara. "I thought I could do it," and there, there, ah! She attempted to explain, but her sobs choked her words. She covered her face with her hands, trying to hide her emerging weakness. It's all right. Everything will be okay," Nancy said softly as she approached her. She gently hugged Becky, pulling her close. Mister Mayer joined them immediately, aiming to comfort the troubled girl. "Why are we in the hallway? Let's move to the living room. Come on in," Eleanor said, smiling warmly at the guest. "Forgive me for intruding like this," Becky sobbed, beginning to calm down. "What happened?" Nancy asked. Nothing that my father didn't warn me about," Becky shrugged. "Running a huge company isn't as easy as I thought. I almost foolishly ruined the business, pushing it to the brink of bankruptcy. 
What about the board of directors? Weren't they supposed to help you? Mr. Mayor asked, raising an eyebrow. I argued with them all at first, and then everyone wanted a piece of it, and they started to break up the whole company. So you came to surrender, Harris asked. Nancy elbowed him immediately, but he had already realized his blunder. Dad, forgive me. I was such a fool, just impossible. Becky sobbed again. Of course, I forgive you, daughter. I forgave you long ago. I understand everything. I was once young and impertinent myself. Thank you. But there's one condition. The businessman looked at his daughter seriously. What? Becky looked at her father in surprise, clearly surprised by his words. First of all, we need to settle all the problems to the end. I know that you and Nancy had a conflict, and I would like you to accept her. Of course, of course, I've wanted to do it for a long time. I haven't finished yet. I would like you to accept her as your half sister. What do you mean? Becky interjected, not understanding. Look. It's a long story. I hope you're old enough to understand it properly. Even before I met your mum, I met Eleanor. She gave birth to Nancy, who is my daughter too. So it turns out you have a half sister that we didn't know about all these years. Becky looked at the woman she had despised not so long ago, and shyly lowered her eyes. She now deeply regretted her rash actions. Please forgive me for all those harsh words," she whispered. "I know I've caused you much pain. I promise it won't happen again. Don't worry. I understand," smiled Nancy. "Still, it might do you good to work among ordinary people to experience the demands of rural labour," Harris noted. "That's not a bad idea," Mister Mayor agreed. "Let's make it a condition: six months of work on a local farm." That'll serve as both your probation period and a lesson. I'll do anything," Becky agreed, bowing her head. "I'll try my hardest." "Hey, Dad, working hard, I see," Nancy said as she walked into the office. "Huh? What? What time is it?" Mister Mayor asked, setting aside his papers. Ever since he had to step back into the company, he had been spending more time in the office, sorting out the chaos created by Becky. You've forgotten all about us," Nancy replied with feigned resentment. "It's evening already. Even the staff have long since gone." "Oh well, I'm coming now." The businessman began to pack fussily, occasionally looking for some papers. "All right. I knew you were doing something important. Here, at least eat, or you'll get skinny again." Her daughter sympathetically offered, placing a container of homemade food on the table. "Thank you." After setting out the dinner, Nancy sat down next to her father. She really wanted to assist him, but she didn't understand the difficult economic intricacies of his company. And the only one who had some understanding in these matters, Becky, was still testing her skills on the farm. Now, Becky, it's been three months. She hasn't given up yet. Mister Mayer seemed to have read her thoughts. She's hanging in there. She's doing really well. No one expected her to make it, you know. Not bad at all for a city dweller, of course. You're both good. You're both strong," the businessman said proudly. By the way, the repairs at my mum's house are almost finished. Thank you for paying for everything. It's so beautiful there, just like a fairy tale. Come on, you're my family. What kind of bills can there be? Nothing's too expensive for you. And one more thing. Nancy smiled mysteriously, then lowered her eyes and stroked her stomach. Only now the businessman noticed the change in his daughter's figure, the noticeable roundness of her belly. After the wedding with Harris, things just happened. We didn't really plan it, but now we're very happy. You, my darlings, I'm so happy. Mister Mayor jumped up from the table and hugged his daughter. The realization that their family was about to change made his heart flutter with joy, anticipating happy troubles.